Could a familiar face come back to Boston to take over in the front office? Rumors are certainly spreading as the news of Heim Bloom's firing is fresh in the minds of fans, but frantic for the Red Sox as they search for his replacement. You are Locked On Red Sox, your daily Boston Red Sox podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to Locked On Red Sox, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Gabby Hurlbut, former ESPN social media associate and current host of the Boston Balling Podcast, here to bring you the latest in all things Boston Red Sox, Monday through Friday, straight to your favorite podcast feed for free. And speaking of free, SiriusXM also has you covered for free for all Red Sox broadcasts so that you don't have to miss a single pitch of Red Sox baseball. Just download the SiriusXM app and search Red Sox and the broadcast of every game will be there so you don't have to miss a single pitch as we head into the home stretch last couple weeks here of the season. Thank you for making Locked on Red Sox your first listen of every day. Today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with a personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com. Lots of news going on in Red Sox land as the firing of Chief Baseball Officer Haim Bloom on Thursday is still very fresh to the Red Sox fan base, myself included. Just a lot of question marks now surrounding where do they go from here? Who comes in to replace him? What kind of job is that person up for because there's certainly a big task at hand when it comes to addressing this Red Sox team. So I'm going to be touching on that on today's episode, as well as addressing a pitcher who will not be returning to the Red Sox this season, as was confirmed over the weekend. And I'm also going to be giving later on in the show a bold prediction for the 2024 Red Sox. So be sure to tune in to today's episode for all of this fun conversation as we attempt attempt to make light of what has been just a frustrating season for this Boston Red Sox team. And there are other words that I could use besides frustrating, but I think that's a very fitting one right now. So hopefully whoever comes in to replace Heim Bloom as the chief baseball officer makes it a less frustrating 2024 season. And I've always said that I respected Heim's ability to address the Red Sox farm system, really rebuild after 2018 when the Red Sox farm system was basically depleted because his predecessor, Dave Dombrowski, had um, really gone all in to build a championship team in 2018. And I mean, who doesn't appreciate that? That was the best Red Sox team that we've watched and their their record showed it, and they just coasted right through to a World Series win. Would I die to have those days back? Yes. Um, The Red Sox can get there. Bloom has really helped to build a line of prospects in the Red Sox system. The, The system still needs some work, especially from a pitching standpoint. At the minor league level, the Red Sox still lack some key pitching pieces. Hopefully they can work through that and be able to develop some young arms to eventually come up and replace, um, you know, some of the weaker links that are on the roster. And when it comes to the Red Sox system, they're in good hands in terms of their future. There's a young core in place now for Boston that can be there for years to come and hopefully help contribute down the road, I'm looking at Sedane Raffaella, who can play both the infield and the outfield and is very versatile, made a really detrimental error in center field on Saturday night that led to the Blue Jays winning the game, but made up for it in extra innings by making a very good sliding grab. So he has the potential to play center field um, well, 
and he can also play in the infield well. So he's a piece that I recommend the Red Sox hanging on to. I understand the temptation of feeling like you might want to trade him right now because of his value, but he's a piece they should absolutely keep. And I'm looking at Casas, you know, Devers, um, eventually Marcelo Meyer when he comes up. Those are key pieces that the Red Sox can continue to build around. And eventually that that core is also going to include Kyle Teal probably sooner than you might think. Um, maybe even sometime in the 2024 season he could make an appearance because the duo of catchers they have now are getting the job done, but not very well. I've said my stance on Reese McGuire multiple times. This season, he's a backup catcher, and that's all that he will be. Connor Wong has come a long way this year in terms of growth, but he still isn't a true number one catcher in my mind. So can Teal be that number one catcher down the road? For sure. The question of all of this, though, is who's going to be the person to come in here and continue to build around that core and be aggressive on the pitching market? One name that's come up in the last couple of days that could be a heavy possibility is Mike Hazen. He's familiar with Boston. Um, right now, he's currently under contract with the Diamondbacks um, through next season with a club option for 2025. So basically, that means the Red Sox would need permission to talk to him because there is a possibility that he gets an extension from Arizona He's currently serving as the executive vice president and GM for the Diamondbacks, which is basically the top baseball operations member of the front office. Um, he's been with that organization since 2016, and he's seen some success in terms of building a core of players, and it's now seemingly starting to pay off. The Diamondbacks were kind of in the doghouse for a few years prior to this, and now they're starting to develop some of those young players that he brought in that are seemingly going to be their core for years to come. And they're playing pretty good baseball this season. I mean, by no means are they a major threat and a top team in baseball, but they've definitely shown their potential. And I think next year could be a huge year for them. I mean, Corbin Carroll in the season he's having as a rookie, it's just pretty incredible to watch. Um, so from that standpoint, he – is able to develop a core of young talent. Additionally, he's been in the Red Sox organization. He spent a decade in the organization prior to going to Arizona. He started off as a director of player development with Boston and eventually worked his way up to general manager, basically serving under Dave Dombrowski. So he's familiar with how the Red Sox operate and Red Sox ownership um, which could be very beneficial for him if he were to come to Boston. When the rumors came out on Sunday that the Red Sox are reportedly interested in having him take over, it's still unclear how serious of a candidate he is, whether he's the top choice, whether he's number two, or where exactly he is. Um, in terms of what I like about him, I like what I just mentioned that he can build a core of players. So I feel like he'd be able to identify young talent and prospects that he could continue to bring into the system. And he's also shown some ability to be aggressive at the major league level. I mean, he traded for Cy Young candidate Zach Gallen. That's a great piece uh, to have on a team that's trying to contend. Um, he also traded for an extended Cattell Marte, who we all know is a star. And um, he also had traded at one point for J.D. Martinez. Um, and then J.D. ultimately went to Boston and just went off. And um, Corbin Carroll, the you know, this player who is on the rise right now, he extended already, which is fantastic. So he has shown that he's not afraid to spend money in the right places. Um, but at the same time, one of the things that I'm concerned about is he hasn't really shown his ability to spend big in free agency. More of these acquisitions for him have come via trade for these bigger players. And there's nothing wrong with trading for big players. But when the Red Sox have the money to spend now this upcoming offseason, 
it needs to start in free agency because they don't want to be in a position where they're giving away all of their young talent. So I'd like to see whoever comes in be more aggressive from a free agent standpoint. So that's a bit of a concern that I have for him. Um, and he just wasn't able to get anything when he traded for Paul Goldschmidt. The return was actually worse than what Bloom ended up getting in return for the Mookie Betts trade. Um, but it's also, you know, at the same time, the circumstances he was in, the Diamondbacks are a much different organization than Boston in terms of the market that they are in. Um, the Boston Red Sox are not a small market team, so they should be able to go out and acquire players. He's also a Massachusetts native, so it would be cool for him to return home and be part of the Red Sox organization. I think there's things he does well and things he doesn't do well. I'd be a little bit worried that it could be Heim Bloom 2.0. And like I said, I'm not hating on Bloom because I do think there's things that he's done very well. But the Red Sox really need to bring in somebody who's going to differentiate himself from that and be able to focus on continuing to grow that farm system, but also put equal focus into the major league club, which I feel is an area that Bloom struggled with, was at the major league level. So would Hazen be Heim Bloom 2.0? In a couple of ways, I feel like he might be. Brandon Gomes from the Dodgers, I discussed him on the show right after the news of the firing broke, is a more enticing option to me. I mean, look at how that Dodgers organization is built now. So I'd prefer... Gomes, but again, the familiarity Hazen has with the Boston Red Sox organization could put him in a great spot. So lots of names going around. Alex Cora already said he doesn't want to take over now. He said he would be interested in one day being a part of a front office. He had a small role within a front office in the World Baseball Classic. Um, so he does have a little bit of experience in it, but he said now is not the time he wants to continue to manage. And I'm happy about that because I think his talents are much better suited for being in the dugout. So we'll have to see what happens. I wouldn't doubt if the Red Sox have somebody in place in the next couple of weeks before the season's over to take over for Bloom. But either way, Mike Hazen overall could bring some great things to the Red Sox. Coming up, I'm going to be talking about a pitcher that we really weren't sure what the status was with him, um, but is now no longer pitching for the rest of the season, which could be seen as some good news for people. If you work in the sales business or have in the past, you know how hard it really is to be in sales. I used to be in it. It's a difficult field to be in. Any help I could have gotten at that time, I appreciated. Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this deep sales, and we've built the first deep sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash locked on. That is linkedin.com slash locked on for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash locked on and get started. I wish I knew about LinkedIn Sales Navigator when I was in the sales business. I was in recruiting to be more specific because it could have seriously helped out because that is certainly not an industry that's easy to be in. And I give props to anybody who is in it. I'm going to be discussing a pitcher who is everybody's favorite, since the sarcasm in that statement, please. Corey Kluber. The Red Sox signed him last offseason, and honestly, I saw it coming that it was going to be a complete disaster with him. There were already signs when he signed with the Red Sox that he was deteriorating and approaching the end of his career. And when he was brought in, I said, hey, it's a small deal. You know, 
could be a low risk, high reward because they're not really spending much money on the guy. So if he can come in and produce in some capacity, then sure, let's do it. Did I expect him to get injured at some point in the season? Sure. I mean, it happens. Pitchers get injured. It's pretty common. Did I expect him to just be as much of a problem as he is? No. He has just been an absolute problem for the Red Sox this season. He's 37 years old. I mean, what can we really expect from him at this point in his career? He only pitched in 15 games for the Red Sox this year, nine of them being starts because he was doing so poorly in his starts that they moved him to the bullpen at one point prior to him getting injured and not coming back. Um, He compiled an ERA of 704 in 55 innings pitched. He was the opening day starter for the Red Sox, and it was expected that he was going to be a key piece for the team this year, but was just incredibly inconsistent and just kept getting injured. And ultimately now his season has come to a close. Um, they have shut him down. The Red Sox announced that he will not be pitching the rest of this season. Um, he's likely to become a free agent because there is an $11 million team option on the table for him, but the Red Sox are not dummies. They absolutely should decline that team option and let him be a free agent because he's more of a liability than anything at this point in his career. And obviously he's a veteran who used to be nasty, used to be one of the best pitchers in baseball when he was in his prime. And we are so far removed from his prime at this point that the best hope that I had when he came in to this organization this offseason, the best hope that I had was that he could come in and maybe be a four or five caliber starter that can give you a few innings, eat some of those innings on the mound, and then just be somewhat productive to the point where he's able to be in that rotation every five days. So clearly that didn't happen. And again, that was my highest expectation for him. It was a very low expectation to start with. That bar was just already not where it could have been because I had already seen some issues to begin with. And I said, Hey, you know, The Red Sox can do them. They need all the help they can get right now from a pitching standpoint. Why not try somebody else out and see if he works out here? Um, And it did not. And so the Red Sox did come out over the weekend and announce that he will not pitch again for the team this year, probably for the best. Um, I mean, it's, it's possible that he just retires at this point, which to me feels like the best move for him retiring after this season and it's like sure okay um if he retires he can look back on his career and say it was an unbelievable one and I'm not doubting that at all and I wish nothing but the best for him but when the news broke that he will not be pitching again this season I felt a sense of relief because at first a couple weeks ago the team was saying It's going to depend on his rehab and how his um, assignments go in the minors and whether he's making enough progress. And there was a chance that later on this month, he would make a couple more starts before the season ends. That was when they still felt like they had a chance to make the playoffs. And if they were still in playoff contention, then maybe they try to give him a couple more starts just to see if he can maybe um, provide length. That's literally all it would have been. Provide length because the bullpen is absolutely gassed at this point in the season, so he could have been somebody who could come in, just provide some innings so that they have another arm out there to help relieve the bullpen. I could have seen that happening if they were still in playoff contention. At this point, they are not. So to me, it makes sense as to why he's not going to pitch again for the rest of the season. There's no point in trying to push him and have him do that. It's just like the Tristan Casas situation that I talked about on yesterday's show. Don't push these guys, especially somebody like Casas, who is a key piece to this team that in the future is going to be probably a star for the Red Sox. It's more important to focus on 2024 and Kluber – 
likely won't end up anywhere else because based on this performance that he had this year in Boston, I don't see another team wanting to sign him and take him on and commit to it when he couldn't even stay on the field. So, I mean, honestly, props to him for the career that he had, but I'm not sad that he's not going to be able to pitch again this year. It just was an absolute frustration all around with him. And it felt like more of a chore watching him pitch than an enjoyment, which is sad because I enjoy watching Red Sox baseball. And when you have a pitcher who just every time he's out there, just cannot figure it out. It's just not a fun process for anybody. So Corey Kluber shut down for the rest of the season. I wish him the best of luck, but good riddance on that. Coming up next, I'm going to be giving a bold prediction for the Boston Red Sox 2024 season. You absolutely will not want to miss this. Modern medical care and treatment are important, but our global supply chains are fragile. Things like pandemics, natural disasters, and foreign travel may cut you off from the treatment you need. Jace Medical is your solution. Just fill out their online form and one of Jace Medical's board certified physicians will review it to determine whether medications are safe and appropriate. Then Jace will send your prescriptions to one of their partner pharmacies where your order will be filled and mailed directly to your home. You can also send your physician a message for answers to treatment related questions anytime. Everyone should be empowered to care for themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. Save more than $360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using my code locked on at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. I'll tell you, I always appreciate medical services more when their physicians are on hand and accessible 24 seven, because sometimes it can make you really uncomfortable if you have some symptom going on and you're not sure what it is. It always makes me feel more comfortable if I know I have somebody to go to at all times. So that's why Jace Medical to me stands out and is the way to go when it comes to your medical needs. The 2023 season for the Boston Red Sox cannot end soon enough. I mean, honestly, it's just been one thing after another this year. And once the Casas injury happened, that was just the icing on the cake to what has truly been just a very up and down season for Boston. And I'm looking back at it and saying, yes, there are some positive aspects to take away from it, like the young talent and the core that the Red Sox are going to have for years to come that they can build around. And that's fun and all, but I'm also looking at it as just an unbelievably plagued season for injuries and players who just have not been able to figure it out. Trevor Story, I'm looking at you when it comes to your offense as just one to be named. He gets somewhat of a grace period because he missed a lot of the season, so he wasn't around live pitching a lot of the season. So that's different. But overall, it's just been a frustration and a struggle having to live through the Kike Hernandez days at shortstop early on. So that all is what it is. We move on. We focus on 2024. The 2024 Boston Red Sox will be a playoff team. I am predicting right now on record. So you can come back to me if this doesn't come to fruition and remember this episode. So bookmark it all you want. The 2024 Boston Red Sox will be a 90-win baseball team that makes the playoffs in some capacity. Now, I'm not saying they're going to win their division because they are in a very competitive division. The AL East is one of the best divisions in baseball, and the Orioles and Rays will still be there. I suspect that the Blue Jays and Yankees will make moves in the offseason to get better as well. But the 2024 Boston Red Sox, mark my words, will win at least 90 games and will be a playoff team. The main reason I say that, they have a lot of the pieces in place. Their offense can hit, and we're not seeing it as of late as in the series against the Toronto Blue Jays, but honestly, 
they probably have just really given up at this point because they know that they are not in playoff contention anymore. If they are healthy and they have their guys that will lead the team on offense healthy, Yoshida, uh, Casas, Devers, um, who knows what's going to happen with the outfield, but maybe Duvall, Rafaela, Duran, you know, some combination of those guys. I am going to kind of leave Verdugo out of this conversation right now because I still think there's a heavy possibility he gets moved. Um, Trevor Story will still be there. Still has to figure it out at the plate. Um, The second base situation, something that they need to figure out too. But overall, there are guys there who can hit. Will your Abreu in the outfield, he's shown impressive numbers offensively since being called up to Boston. He should be here to stay. I'd rather ship Verdugo out and keep him because of the potential he's shown. The pieces are in place, especially on offense. There are a lot of pieces in place from the bullpen. John Schreiber, Josh Winkowski, Brennan Bernardino, Nick Pavetta, if he stays in the pen, I think he should, and I don't like him as a starter as much, but that's a conversation for another day. Um, you know, Chris Martin, who who knows what's going to happen with him. Nick Robertson, I'd add to that category, a player who's shown a lot of potential since being here. So they have the pieces in place to be a contending team. They just need to add to the rotation. When you put Brian Bayo in there, Tanner Houck, who – Absolutely has potential. He's been showing that he can pitch a little bit deeper into games now by going six innings, which is going to be key. Cutter Crawford's shown improvement this year, too. If you have those three and, you know, Chris Sale, it just is what it is. One more year of that contract. I'm not relying on him to stay fully healthy, but if he's there and he's part of the rotation, fine. Acquire one or two more starting pitchers, a front-end starter. I'm looking at Yamamoto, the Japanese highly anticipated pitcher, who the Red Sox are very much interested in and have a good shot of landing could be a huge difference maker for this pitching staff that automatically puts the Red Sox at a much better caliber in terms of their pitching rotation and add a couple bullpen pieces. They definitely need a couple pieces to um, surround Alex Cora with because guys like Bernardino Schreiber Winkowski those bridge guys, they can't pitch every day. So they need to get a more reliable other part of the bullpen because it was a lot of moving people around this season, like Brandon Walter, Chris Murphy, Joe Jakes. Um, Moving people up and down between AAA and the majors and not really having a consistent bullpen other than those guys that I mentioned previously before. Um, So get a couple more bullpen pieces. If they can go out and really focus on pitching, they will be a competitive team. Pitching was a glaring weakness for them this year. And obviously they made a lot of defensive errors, um, which a good portion of that was fueled when Kike was playing shortstop. Trevor Story is a much better defender. So that will be better. Devers has improved his defense. And Casas has come a long way defensively in the infield as well, which is not being talked about enough, by the way. So I might be optimistic when I say 90 wins. I am a very positive person. I always have been. It's in my nature. But if they can fix the pitching staff and go in and get a couple key pieces to turn around this pitching staff, that is a very competitive baseball team. That's what people are not realizing is it might seem like they're more pieces away than they actually are. They really are not. And with Heim Bloom being let go and the Red Sox having the opportunity to bring somebody else in who could really help shape this organization for years to come in terms of what it's going to be. I trust that that person will be very heavy and aggressive on the pitching market. If they do that, this is a playoff caliber team and one that has a really good shot of winning their division. So watch and see how this all plays out in this upcoming offseason. Those pitching pieces are going to be absolutely crucial, and I trust that they will come, and the Red Sox will be much better in 2024. Keep the faith like I always ask you to do, as hard as it is, 
Brighter days are ahead for the Boston Red Sox. Take that prediction with you. Alex Cora, I trust you to utilize the players you have on the roster. So keep the faith. Go Red Sox, and I will catch you on the flip side.